disasters. And joining me now with more is the representative for Georgia's 1st Congressional District, Congressman Buddy Carter. Thank you so much for being with us today. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you for having me. Of course. So, Mr. Congressman, what are your thoughts on this? Can you break this down for us? Well, certainly what we've learned during this pandemic especially is that it's something I think we knew all along, but we realized during the pandemic, and that is that we cannot be dependent on other countries for our pharmaceutical needs, for our PPE needs. Mm -hmm. You know, the Assistant Secretary of Emergency and, and, and uh, of Preparedness and Emergency Response, the ASPR, told us that even though we didn't know that about the virus until February of 2020, they saw a downtick in the amount of PPE and pharmaceuticals that were coming from China as early as the fall of 2019, which tells us that China was hoarding those, those medications and hoarding that PPE. Listen, we all know that energy independence is important to our national security. Pharmaceutical independence is important to our national security as well. That's why we started the caucus. That's why I have legislation addressing the need for bringing and repatriating pharmaceutical manufacturers back to America so that we can manufacture drugs here in America and to have our allies manufacturing drugs so that we're not dependent on our adversaries for our pharmaceutical needs, which is so very important, vitally important for our national security. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so grateful that you are leading this charge and, and um, you know, spreading awareness on this matter because I think it's so important and not many people think about this aspect um, of the situation here. I, I think it's so important to be putting America first in every way possible and bringing pharmaceutical independence is definitely a part of that. Um, Congressman, why do you think it is that we've been allowing potential adversaries to manufacture so much for us? Well, you know, it's, it, it really is about competitiveness. And we've seen a number of pharmaceutical manufacturers who have left this country primarily because of labor costs. And now we're legislation that I've got, the Made in America Act, the Manufacturing Active Pharmaceutical Ingredients, Drugs and Incipients here in America. We're trying to offer the, the opportunity, the tax opportunity zones that were created during the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act to entice companies to come back to America and to, and, and to be competitive here in America and make those drugs in America. But it's very important for us to realize that even though some of those drugs may be made here in America, the active pharmaceutical ingredients, the API, that's the key. That's what we're still having to get from China. That's what we need to be manufacturing and producing here in America. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we are very excited to hear that you're you're taking charge here and, and leading us um, in the correct path as far as that's concerned. Um, in other news, Secretary Blinken just met with Xi Jinping. What are your thoughts on how the U.S.-China meeting went and what do you make about his comments on Taiwan? Well, it certainly was an inauspicious start. Uh, and it wasn't the kind of uh, welcome that, that you would expect for an American uh, diplomat who, who is uh, a high-ranking official in American government. But I think it shows the weakness of this administration worldwide and the lack of respect that, that our adversaries have for, for our country because of the, the weak national policies and world policy that this administration is undertaking, i.e. Afghanistan and what has happened there and, and, and other areas as well. But listen, Taiwan is essential. We are the democratic, the leaders of democracy here in America, and we've got to back Taiwan. That's why I sent Secretary Blinken a letter before he went over to China, encouraging him to go to Taiwan. That's why I applaud Kevin McCarthy and Nancy Pelosi for both going to Taiwan and showing our, our, our encouragement of them and our support of Taiwan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. Well, interestingly enough, Bill Gates also recently met with the Chinese president. He went so far as to call Gates a friend. Senator Rand Paul also had some words about this. Let's check out what he had to say. It has to be a reassessment. Look, Bill Gates has been over there recently. Bill Gates is the largest funder of trying to find these viruses in remote caves and bring them to big cities. So what happened in China is they went eight to 10 hours south of Wuhan two to 300 feet deep into a, la into a cave, found viruses and took them back to a city of 15 million. There are many, many scientists who think that Bill Gates is wrong in funding this, that our government's wrong, that the Chinese government, that really we don't need to be searching for viruses that may never interact with man. And it's worse than that. They bring 
viruses that we may never interact with. They bring them back to the lab, but then they manipulate them by combining them with other viruses to create viruses that don't exist in nature. But this has largely been funded by Bill Gates. He, he funds the WHO more than most countries do. So there's a responsibility there. And I don't think he's not, I think he's well-intended, but I think he's inadvertently helped to create something that the biggest danger to mankind right now is something that he's been funding. And that is finding these viruses, taking them back to the lab and manipulating them to make them more dangerous. Congressman, what are your thoughts on this public relationship between Bill Gates and the CCP? Well, I'm very disappointed and, and, and very skeptical. I think it is naive of Bill Gates, and he knows better than this. And I could not agree with Senator Paul Moore. Listen, what we're talking about here is gain-of-function research, and I am opposed to gain-of-function research. Listen, Einstein said years ago that the only thing more dangerous than ignorance is arrogance. And gain-of-function research is nothing more than an intellectual arrogance, and it has no place in our society at all. So I agree with Senator Paul, and I think that Bill Gates, I, I'm very, very disappointed that he's undertaking this. Yeah, it's definitely disappointing and, and quite frightening, given uh, the pull we know that he has and how uh, drastically he seems to affect uh, the well-being of our nation. Uh, how do you think Americans can fight back against unelected people like Bill Gates, who are clearly trying to rule the world? Well, it's, it's very unfortunate, obviously. And, and you know, the, the ironic thing here is that Bill Gates is the one, who, one of the people who has benefited the most from capitalism. And yet he's over there with the Chinese Communist Party as opposed to capitalism. But, you know, the way that we can fight back is through the pocketbook. And, and that is to get Bill Gates's attention in some of his companies by boycotting those companies. I mean, it's done all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's great. Great advice. I mean, we've seen that successfully pan out with Bud Light and Target most recently. Um, I think it's time we as Americans uh, hit Bill Gates in the pocketbook where it actually hurts. Congressman, thank you so much for joining us today. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you. Take care.